welcome back to Erica's Little Welsh Garden. Thanks very much for joining me today, where we're just in the kitchen and we're about to make some banana wine. Now, this is the wine that we're making today. So I started filming this about a week ago and I'm so, so excited to share this recipe with you because it's fermenting so well. I can't wait for it to finish because this is gonna be some really, really good wine. Um, as well as the instructions that we're gonna do in the video today, there will also be a link to my website below in the description where you'll be able to download um, and print the full instructions and also share that on social media if you think it's a really good recipe. Um, also, if this is the first time you watch me, do you please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of all of my latest videos. But anyway, let's start making this. So to successfully brew your banana wine, you'll need the following equipment. Firstly, you'll want to get yourself a four and a half litre glass demijohn with an airlock. Then you'll need two large pans, preferably pans that take about four and a half litres of water. I always use my trusted preserving pan every time I make wine. It's just so versatile, it's really big and you can get a lot of liquid in there. Um, I'll put a link to mine in the description actually because I absolutely love using it and if you haven't got one, it's really worth it if you make a lot of wine or jams. Then um, I've just got a smaller, a smaller pan here just so when I strain off all of the liquid later, I can do it easily. You want to have yourself a sieve and a muslin. If you don't have um, a muslin or anything like that, you can use a tea towel or a pillowcase. And then just the last things you'll need really are a potato masher and you'll also want a ladle. The ingredients that we need to make this banana wine are 1.2 kilograms of really overripe bananas. I was really fortunate that somebody gave me a couple of bags of these so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to make this banana wine. Um, if you are somebody that only maybe um, has one or two overripe bananas a week or you know a month you can always freeze them until you've got 1.2 kilograms because it really is important that these are overripe bananas. If you you know, never have much wastage at all and you want to have a go with this recipe, just buy the kind of bashed up looking ones at the supermarket and leave them a week or two in the fruit bowl until they look something like this. And to be honest, you can make them with bananas that are further gone than this. Um, you'll want to have one black tea bag, one lemon, 200 grams of raisins. This will just add a really good flavour to your wine. But to be honest, if you didn't have 200 grams of um, raisins, you could just add an extra 200 grams of bananas to the recipe instead. And then you'll want 900 grams of sugar. I just use the basic white sugar from the supermarket just because it's the cheapest. But if you want to use a brown one, that would probably add a really nice flavour to your wine. But it's up to you in terms of the sugar. And then the last thing that I'll be using is the yeast to brew the wine now i've got this um young's um wine yeast from i got this off of amazon actually and it is for a high alcohol um wine and it's also speedy as well so yeah that's the one i use and i'll put a link to that in my um in the description below if you're interested in that i've had this quite a while actually and keep it in the fridge so yeah this is the ingredients and now we've got that all together we can go ahead and start making the wine. So the first thing I've done is just add three litres of water to the preserving pan and I'm just chopping up the bananas now, leaving the skins on. Leaving the skins on will allow a much more banana-y flavour to come through in the wine. So I'm just really quickly chopping them up. We're going to put them on the boil soon and then mash them so we don't have to worry too much about how you chop them up now. So yeah, just simply chopping them and chucking them in. I'm so excited to be making this banana wine recipe actually. I've wanted to do it for absolutely ages, but we never really have bananas going bad in our house. So there we go. Okay, so all of the bananas are now chopped up really nicely in the water. And I'm just going to add those um, raisins on top and we can get it on the hob now. 
So there you go, it's on the hob now and I'm just going to bring it to the boil slowly and as soon as it comes to the boil I'm going to let it simmer for about five minutes or so. While you're waiting for your bananas to just come to the boil you need to put the kettle on and add your tea bag to a cup of boiling water and just let that steep on the side. Now the bananas have been simmering for about five ten minutes now so i'm ready just to start mashing it really gently so we can just kind of squash all of the bananas out of their skins and it will just help it infuse with the hot water it's really important that you um, boil the banana in this recipe some recipes you don't boil anything you just add boiling water to kind of cover the bananas and things like that but I don't use any um, sulfites in my wines so I don't add anything any chemicals like a Camden tablet to my um, wine so I just make sure that it is boiled so it kills off any residual yeast on the um, skins of the bananas and things like that this is kind of the way that I've I've learned how to make my wines just by boiling everything, giving it a good mash so it infuses really nicely and then that way I don't need to add any chemicals to my wine. So this took about five minutes of mashing and as you can see it looks pretty gross at this stage um, but like I said I'm going to leave it now for a couple of hours but before I do that I'm just going to add the lemon juice to the wine or to the liquid it's not wine yet we haven't added the yeast And I'm also going to put that tea bag in. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Actually, I'm going to take the tea bag out and I'm just going to add the tea to this liquid. And give it a quick stir. This will just give it a really good chance for all of the raisins to kind of expand and for all of the juices to infuse. My preserving pan doesn't have a lid, so I'm just going to leave this over the top and, yeah, leave it for a few hours now. And I'm back. So it's been seven hours since I left the banana and the raisins in here just infusing with the water and it's looking very lovely. And to be honest, if you could smell it in here, it smells like... Um, I've been cooking banana bread so yeah really happy that I managed to leave it so long to infuse and pretty much seven hours is almost as long as overnight isn't it so I'm just giving it another quick kind of bash with the um, potato masher just so I can kind of squidge as much juice out of all of the fruit as I can um, but it's looking pretty good and yeah the smell of it as well I just can't get over how bananary this room smells so i'd probably suggest leaving and kind of giving this another mash for another five minutes or so and i did give it a little mash before i started filming again so yeah it's looking pretty good but you know the longer you mash it the more juice you are going to get out and then as soon as you're happy that you have mashed it enough and you want to move on to the next stage we just need to give it a good strain and get all of the pulp off. So I'm pretty happy that I'm at that point now. So I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to get the pot that the other large pot that I've got just with the sieve here and I'm going to use the muslin just to strain all of this liquid through sometimes i kind of fold the mus muslin up a little bit so it's you know a much finer mesh for all the liquid to go through but it takes absolutely ages so i'm just going to leave it as kind of a single layer 
and then just gently ladle the liquid in here. So when we're at this stage, you need to make sure you just let it drip through naturally. If you push it through um, the, the cloth, you're going to just get more sediment through, which is going to take longer for your wine to clear. So you just need to be really patient with it at this stage. So I'm pretty happy now that most of the liquid has strained through the muslin. I'm just going to um, leave it over here for a second and we can have a look at the liquid. As you can see, it's really milky looking, isn't it? And I think with, with um, bananas, they're really starchy, aren't they? So I'm guessing this is going to be a wine that takes quite a while to clear. Now, uh, the next stage we need to do is we need to add the sugar. But because I've strained it through the cloth here, I didn't, um, I didn't sterilise any of this. So the liquid here has probably got some bacteria introduced to it. And because I'm adding the sugar, the sugar isn't sterile either. So I want to make sure before I get it put into the demijohn that this is completely sterile. So what we're going to do now is put this back on the hob. Um, I'm probably going to put it back in this pan, actually. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. So I always like to just get it, bring it back to the boil. And just as it's at that boiling point, I will add the sugar. And then I can make sure that it's all completely sterile. Oh, that's the wrong one. So now as well, it's just having a quick look. And I'm just under the three litre mark. And my demijohn is four and a half litres. So what I'm going to do is also add some boiling water to it now to bring it up to that four litre mark. And then that will help it reach kind of the um, boiling point a little bit quicker as well. Okay, so the liquid has just started boiling, so what I want to do is just put the sugar in really quickly and give it a stir. Always, if you can, use a metal spoon when you're making wine, just because if it's a wooden one, it could be harboring lots of bacteria in. So I'm just going to give this a really quick stir. And just until you feel all of the sugars dissolved and I'm gonna just turn it off now if you leave it boiling for ages it's going to caramelize and it's going to change the flavor of your wine so it's probably really going out of focus now so I do apologize if that's the case So I'm really happy that all of the um, sugar has dissolved now. So it's pretty much ready and ready to get in demijohn. But if I put it in a demijohn now um, at boiling point, it's just going to explode the demijohn. So what I'm going to do now is just put this, uh, put the the whole pan in the um, kitchen sink with some cool water in it, and I'll probably leave it about 20 minutes just so it's cool enough because we want to get it in the demijohn under an airlock as soon as we can so that we know no bacteria is going to get into it. But yeah, it's a little bit too hot for that right now. So I'm just going to leave this in some cool water for, like I said, about 20 minutes, just so that we can bring that temperature down um, and get it in that demijohn as quick as possible. The liquid has cooled enough now that we can get it into the demijohn. Just remember that you need to make sure your demijohn is completely sterile along with the airlock and that your funnel is sterile too. So I'm just putting the airlock into some cold water. Now I'm really short so I just need to use a little step up here to put the liquid in.
interesting looking colour. So as I said earlier, I always like to leave a lovely little gap at the very top of the demijohn. So as it starts fermenting, it has quite a lot of room in the first couple of days when it's most kind of furious, but it's still a little bit lower. So I'm just adding some more um, boiling water to it and just trying to bring it up to around about here. And then, yeah, it can just bubble away to its heart's content for a few days and then when I rack it after about seven days I can just add the um, add some more boiled water to the very top but at the moment um, if I was to add the yeast it would be too hot um, and would actually kill it so at the moment I'm just having a look on this thermometer and it's telling me it's over 32 degrees and the um, yeast that I'm going to be using needs to be put in at 20 to 25 degrees centigrade. So I'm just going to leave this now for um, a couple of hours just to reach our temperature. You can just leave it overnight if you wanted to or wait around until it cools down. Um, but as you can see now, I have already put the airlock on the top. So I don't have to worry about any bacteria or anything like that getting in there. So finally, we are at the right temperature to add the yeast. And like I said earlier, I've used this Young's yeast. And this is a specially formulated uh, yeast for high alcohol. So I imagine that this will actually turn out to be quite a dry wine by the time it's finished. So with this, I just need to add one heat tape teaspoon. And I should always add this with a funnel because I always make such a mess. So that is now added to the um, demijohn. And I now will just cover it with one of these knitted demijohn covers and leave it to start fermenting nice and kind of nice and snug in this jacket in a dark place but i didn't explain that very well i had a bit of a brain blank then because when i was filming it i heard my son had got out of bed and he was walking around the house looking for me so i was trying to concentrate on talking to you while listening to him looking for me but basically you just add the yeast to your wine you want it to keep nice and warm for the first kind of 24 hours of the fermentation process so i've knitted these demijohns or these demijohn covers which i put over the wine which is great because it keeps it really nice and warm and keeps the light out so i'm going to go and put this away now for 24 hours and i'll come back to you tomorrow now and we can have a look and see how it's fermenting and then we will finish off. Thanks very much for watching for now, and I'll see you in the morning. Apologies that I didn't come back to you within 24 hours, like I said on my video, but life was busy and things got in the way, so it just didn't happen. Um, but as you can see, and possibly here, the airlock is very busy, and um, there's a lot of foam on the top, and this is fermenting really, really nicely. Um, you'll also notice at the bottom is a layer of sediment. Now, usually within the first kind of week of starting off a new wine, I always like to rack it off um, into another demijohn so I can get rid of that sediment. But actually, I've just moved it into here and some of the sediment's been disturbed anyway. Um, but the reason I like to get it off the first layer of sediment is that sediment is made up of dead yeast and also it's made from all of those little particles of the banana and the grapes. So left in the demijohn like that, you know, you're potentially going to be getting some off flavours from the dead yeast and the mould. So, or not necessarily mould, but that fruit is going to deteriorate at the bottom of there. So I will be, over the next kind of couple of days, I'll be transferring this into another demijohn. And once I do that, I will take it also to the top as well. Uh, but like I said at the beginning, I've wanted to make this wine for a very long time and I'm so, I'm so excited that I've actually started it because 
I can't wait to taste it. What my plan is though, that I'll let it ferment off naturally and then I will kind of just wait for it to clear because as you can see at the moment, it's really cloudy and I would hope that this would clear over about kind of six months to a year. But yeah, there you go. This is what it looks like after about a week. I said earlier thank you so much for joining me today don't forget that you'll be able to find the full instructions on my website which i'll put a link below if you're new here please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you be notified of all of my latest videos i'll also put some wine making videos up here somewhere um, if you're interested and if there's any wines that you are interested in having a recipe in but you can't find one please let me know because i absolutely love making up new wine recipes Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Bye.